Welcome to Biology at Ease. In my previous video, I explained sexual reproduction in plants. Now, in this video, we'll be discussing sexual reproduction in animals. The male gametes in animals is known as sperm, whereas the female gamete is known as ovum or egg. Now, the body of the sperm is divided into four parts, head, neck, middle piece and tail. The head is the topmost portion of the sperm. Now, the upper part of the head is known as acrosome, which contains a large number of enzymes that helps in the process of fertilization. The next part is neck, which is the smallest part of the sperm and it joins head to the middle piece. Middle piece consists of a cell organelle which is known as mitochondria and this mitochondria provides energy to the sperm during the process of fertilization. Tail is the last part of the sperm body and this tail helps in motility of the sperm that is the tail helps in movement of the sperm so that the sperm can reach the ovum and can fertilize it. The ovum has a spherical structure and it consists of a nucleus which is surrounded by dense cytoplasm. The ovum is non-motile in nature which means it does not consist of a tail. So the two male gametes present inside the animal body includes sperm which are present in male whereas ovum or egg is present in female. Now for fertilization to occur the sperm from the body of the male animal have to reach inside the female body so that the fusion can take place finally leading to the formation of zygote. Now there are two types of fertilization. The first one is known as internal fertilization. In internal fertilization, the fusion of male gamete that is the fusion of the sperm with the ovum takes place inside the body of the female animal. Whereas the second one is external fertilization in which the fusion of male and female gamete takes place outside the female body in a medium like water. Let's start with internal fertilization. In internal fertilization, the fusion of male and female gamete takes place inside the female body and for this fertilization to occur, there is a process which is known as copulation which in general is known as mating. By the process of mating, the male animal injects its sperm inside the body of the female so that the sperm can reach the genital tract of the female. And this is how the fusion of male and female gamete occurs in internal fertilization. Internal fertilization occurs in birds, reptiles and mammals including the human beings. The next is external fertilization. In external fertilization, the fusion between the male and female gamete occurs outside the female body in a medium like water. Now what happens? The male animal releases its sperm in water. Similarly, the female animal releases its ovum or egg in the water. Now the sperm fuses with the ova leading to the formation of the fertilized egg or fertilized ova which is known as zygote. So this is how external fertilization occurs. It takes place in animals like amphibians which includes frogs and fishes. So frogs and fishes includes external fertilization whereas in human beings internal fertilization occurs. Let's quickly revise everything. Fertilization is the process of fusion of male gamete with the female gamete leading to the formation of zygote which is the fertilized egg or fertilized ovum. There are two types of fertilization internal fertilization which takes place inside the female body for example in human beings external fertilization in which the fusion between the male and female gamete occurs outside the female body in a medium like water and external fertilization occurs in frogs and fishes the female gamete is known as ovum or egg whereas the male gamete is known as sperm now there is a particular age at which the production of the male and female gamete occurs and the sex hormones start producing inside the animal body and this age is known as puberty. So puberty is the age at which the sex hormones start producing inside the animal body due to which the animal that is both male and female animal becomes sexually mature that is able to reproduce. The puberty in human females is achieved between 10 to 12 years whereas human male achieves puberty between 
13 to 14 years. Now let's have a look upon the male and female reproductive structure in human beings. The male reproductive system consists of seven major organs which includes testes, scrotum, epididymis, vas deferens which is also known as sperm duct, seminal vesicles, prostate gland and penis. So let's start with the first organ that is testes. Testes are also known as the primary reproductive organs of males. There is a pair of testes which means two testes are present in human males. Now these testes are responsible for the production of male sex hormones which is known as testosterone and the male sex cells which are known as sperms. The testes are present in a muscular pouch which is known as scrotum that lies outside the abdominal cavity of males. Now scrotum is present outside the abdominal cavity because the formation of sperms by the testes requires 3 degrees Celsius less temperature than the normal body temperature of human males. Now the sperms produced by the testes are released into a coiled tube which is known as epididymis and inside this epididymis the sperms are temporarily stored. From the epididymis the sperms are passed on to a long tube which is known as vas deferens or sperm duct. So this is the vas deferens which is a long tube that is connected to the epididymis. Now this vas deferens is connected to the urethra which is a tube coming from the bladder. So vas deferens combines with the urethra and this urethra or the common passage now contains urine coming from the bladder and the sperm from the vas deferens. Now along the path of the vas deferens there are two glands which are known as seminal vesicle and prostate glands. The secretions produced by these two glands provides lubrication or a passage for the sperms to move inside the tube. The secretions produced by the glands is liquid in nature and this is known as semen. So the function of semen is to allow easy transport of the sperms inside the sperm duct that is inside the vas deferens. Now the urine from the bladder inside the urethra and the sperms present in the urethra are passed on to the penis. And it is from the penis that the sperms are ejected out from the body of the male organism. So this is how the male reproductive system helps in the transport and production of the sperms inside the male body. Let's quickly revise the different parts of male reproductive system. There are seven parts of the male reproductive system which includes testes which are the primary reproductive organs of males that helps in the production of male sex hormones called testosterone and the male gametes called sperms. The testes are present in a muscular pouch called scrotum that lies outside the abdominal cavity. From the testes the sperms are passed on to a coiled tube which is known as epididymis that temporarily stores the sperms. From the epididymis the sperms are passed on to the vas deferens or the sperm duct. The sperm duct connects with the urethra coming from the bladder and now this common passage contains both urine as well as the sperm. Along the path of the vas deferens there are two types of glands called seminal vesicles and prostate glands and the secretions produced by these two glands is known as semen which helps in easy transport of the sperms inside the vas deferens. Now from the vas deferens the sperms are finally passed on to the penis and it is the penis from where the sperms are ejected out from the body of the males. Now let's come to the female reproductive system. The female reproductive system consists of four parts, ovaries, oviducts which are also known as fallopian tubes, uterus and vagina. Ovaries are the primary reproductive structures in females and these ovaries are responsible for the production of female sex hormones called estrogen and progesterone. The ovaries also produces the female sex cells or the female gametes which are known as ovum or egg. Ovaries contain thousands of structures which are known as follicles that consist of immature eggs. So follicles are the structures present inside the ovaries and each follicle contains an immature egg. Before the attainment of puberty by the human females, these eggs remain immature inside the follicles. But when the girl reaches the age of puberty, the follicles and the eggs inside the follicles get matured. That is, now they have the ability to get fertilized. Now the ovaries are connected to the oviduct or the fallopian tube by finger-like structures known as infundibulum. 
so in fundibulum helps in connecting the ovary to the oviduct or the fallopian tube the ovaries after the attainment of puberty by the human girls releases an ovum every 28 days and this ovum is received by the infundibulum from the infundibulum the ovum is passed on to the oviduct now it is the oviduct where the fertilization of the ovum takes place during copulation that is mating process the sperms are released from the penis of the males and it enters the vagina now these sperms passes to the cervix which is a narrow opening from the cervix it passes to a u shaped structure which is known as uterus and finally to the oviduct and inside the oviduct the fertilization of the ovum takes place after fertilization the cell formed is known as zygote this zygote undergoes several divisions and finally forms a cluster of cells which is known as embryo the embryo now passes through the u shaped structure which is known as uterus in common language it is known as womb and inside the womb the development of this embryo takes place now inside this structure called uterus the embryo gets attached and this attachment of embryo to the uterine wall is known as implantation let's summarize the female reproductive system the female reproductive system consists of four major parts ovaries oviducts uterus and vagina ovaries are the primary reproductive structures in females which produces the female gametes called ova or eggs and the female hormones called estrogen and progesterone after the attainment of puberty by the human females the ovaries releases an ova in every 28 days and this ova is accepted or received by a structure known as infundibulum the infundibulum passes the ova to the oviduct so ova are present inside the oviduct now during copulation the male organism excretes or expels the sperms from the penis and these sperms then enters the vagina and from vagina passes to the oviduct and inside the oviduct the fusion between the sperm and the ova takes place so it is inside the oviduct the fertilization process is completed the fertilized egg that is the zygote now gets converted into another structure which is known as embryo now the embryo is passed on to the uterus and the further development of this embryo now takes place inside the uterus now the attachment of the embryo to the uterine wall is known as implantation after the process of implantation a tissue gets developed between the uterine wall and the embryo and this tissue is known as placenta this placenta helps in exchange of oxygen food and waste products between the mother and the developing fetus or the embryo so placenta is a special tissue which helps in exchange of various materials between the mother and the developing fetus now after a period of 9 months which in biology is known as gestation the baby is expelled out from the mother's body so gestation is the duration of 9 month during which the development of the fetus takes place inside the mother's body after gestation the release of a hormone called oxytocin inside the mother's body causes uterine contraction due to which the cervix and the vagina enlarges and the baby is expelled out so what happens after the completion of 9 months the release of oxytocin causes the contraction of the uterus so suppose this upper part is the uterus the uterus contracts due to which the vagina that is the lower region of the body enlarges and the baby is expelled out from the vagina and this process of expelling out of the baby from the vagina of human female body is known as parturition so parturition is the process of expelling out of the baby from the mother's body after the completion of the gestation period so this is how the formation and the delivery of a baby takes place in human beings now there is a cycle taking place in humans which is known as menstrual cycle it is a 28 day cycle which occurs in all the human females after the attainment of puberty on the 14th day of this menstrual cycle the ovary releases an ova into the oviduct and this process of release of ovum by the ovary is known as ovulation 
before ovulation the wall of the uterus gets thickened with blood vessels so that it can provide an appropriate environment for the developing embryo so on 14th day the ova is released from the ovary and this process is called ovulation after the ovulation if fertilization occurs that is the fusion between this ova and the sperm take place then the zygote is formed and this zygote further develops into embryo and this embryo gets attached to the wall of the uterus and further processes like implantation gestation and parturition occurs but if the egg is not fertilized then what happens this egg dies off and the wall of the uterus also gets broken now the removal of this wall of uterus that is the inner layer of the uterus along with the dead ovum from the vagina of the human females is known as menstruation which in general language is known as periods because it gets repeated after every 28 days if the egg is not fertilized so what is menstrual cycle it is a 28 day cycle occurring in all the human females after the attainment of puberty on 14th day of the menstrual cycle ovulation occurs that is the ova is released by the ovary if this ova is fertilized then all the other processes of pregnancy occurs otherwise this ova along with the inner layer of the uterus comes out from the vagina and this process is called menstruation so what is menstruation menstruation is the breakdown and removal of the inner thick layer of the uterus and the blood vessels along with the dead ova from the body of the females in the form of vaginal bleeding the process of menstruation stops permanently after age of 50 years So after 50 years no menstruation occurs in human females. So this is all about sexual reproduction in animals. I hope you are clear with the content. If you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching.